Here are some little Proxmox tips that I like to use to get the most out of my Proxmox system and to make my workflow better. Proxmox has a time equals on in ZFS, which has a lot of unnecessary logging that keeps track of when files are being accessed. For most uses, you can turn this off and have a reasonable performance impact, especially on slower drives like mechanical hard drives, and it'll also reduce the amount of writes going to a solid state drive. You can do this by using this command here to flip it off. You can turn your Proxmox server into a little network switch by adding it to the bridge configuration. So in this example, I added the ENP 5S0 network card, and when I update my network settings, it'll be essentially like those two ports on a network switch together, and they're connected to all the VMs as well. Generally, it's better to have a discrete switch, but sometimes it's nice to just have another port that works as a switch. In order to save a little bit of time when creating new VMs, I can create a template of an empty VM with all the settings that I normally like to change. So that way I don't have to go change all those settings when I set up a new VM, because it's already done that and saved it into the template for me. All I need to do is change my ISO file and boot up into it. If you have a virtual machine that doesn't have a GUI, like this Debian VM I have right here, you can save a little bit of CPU usage by going under options for the VM and then turning use tablet for pointer off. This makes the pointer work a lot better if you're using a GUI interface, but uses a little bit of CPU. And if you have a good amount of command line only VMs, you can save a moderate amount of CPU power by turning that off. One way I can copy files to a virtual machine is by taking those files, putting them in an ISO image and attaching it as a CD DVD drive. This is nice if you don't want to connect your VM to the internet in order to set this up, or it can just be an easy way to copy files for like installers or files that you want to copy and read only from. So in this case, in my current directory, I have this host file that I want to do, and I can do make isofs, dash o is my output name, so I'm just going to call it hostsfile.iso. I'm going to put my input file of the host file, and now I have a new file of hostfiles.iso. I can then copy that ISO file I created into an ISO storage that Proxmox can use, and then I can edit a virtual machine and add it. And then if I start this virtual machine up, I'll have access to that host file I put in the ISO image. In my Debian virtual machine, I can see it show up as an SR0 device, which is a CD-ROM. I've then mounted it to a test point, and there's that host file that I made the ISO image with. One thing that saves me a little bit of time when creating a VM is naming my most used storage the highest alphabetically. So in this example, I have an A dash in front of the local drive storage. So that way it's at the top alphabetically, so it just automatically shows up. So when I go to things like disks, it just automatically selects A dash drive by default. And if I forget to change it, it's on the drive that I want it to use. Here are some of the settings I use when creating a VM to get the maximum amount of performance and features that I like to use. Under bus dash device for disks, I change this to vert IO block. It's normally the fastest and lowest overhead storage device. I also enable discard, which presents the trim operation to the VM, and it lets you save space on the host if you want to do over provisioning with disks, because then you only need the space that the actual VM is allocating, not the full size of the disk. Under CPU, I will pick host in almost all cases. The only time I'd change that is if I'm doing something like a cluster, and in that case, I'd pick the lowest common denominator chip here, so what they'd all support. I also make sure that vert IO is selected when setting up networking for the VM. Here are some things you can do in Proxmox to get a little bit more customizability than they allow in their UI and interface. The snippets folder allows you to run scripts at specific times during a VM. So you can have it run a script right after boot up or during different activities. This is great for things like when I was doing my core pinning video, it would automatically run the VM and then it would run my script that does the pinning of that VM I just started. Proxmox does not allow every KVM option to be used because there is a massive amount of options that can be used. But if you want to use one of these other options, you can edit a VM's config file, type in args, and then have the argument that you want to be used passed directly to KVM. One interesting option I found is dash snapshot. This makes it so that all changes to a VM are lost once it's shut down or rebooted. This can be nice if you have like a user using a VM and they might be browsing the web or something, and then when they go to reboot it and another user uses it, all of their potentially saved info or history is deleted. If you're using ZFS and Proxmox and want to know how much space a VM is actually using on disk, not just the size of the virtual disk, ZFS list O space will show that to you. So if I take a look at a VM here, I can see the amount of use space on disk that it's actually using, and then I can see the amount of space that a snapshot's using. So if I want to go which one's using all my space or which one's snapshots are using all my face, this is a nice little interface that lets me see all of that information. Sometimes you need to shut down your Proxmox VM or host and you want to be able to keep progress on whatever task a VM was running so that it doesn't have to be shut down or rebooted with the host. And letting the VM hibernate can be one great way to do this. 
So you hibernate all your VMs, then you can reboot the host, and then it will start back all up again if you have it set to start at boot, and it will all continue from the exact same state they were in earlier. I wish Proxmox would add this in their interface by putting it under the bulk options or shut down and hibernate all VMs first. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you learned something. If you have any other Proxmox tips that you'd like to share, please put them in the comments below.